All right, a new day, a new way to make an AI influencer, but not any influencer. We're going to have them have their own unique voice. Okay, so I just had to share this bikini I found. Yes, I have a consistent voice. I sound the same, you guys. Literally, you can't Today, tell the difference. Today, I'll show you the way I'm currently doing this fast, cheaper than any other workflows that I've shown you before, and it actually stays consistent. You can use this for campaigns, for uh, social content, or just to build an influencer you don't personally have to show up as. So that means that you can also train yourself in your own likeness. I'll walk you through the whole thing step by step. It's gonna be a very simple tutorial, about 10 minutes. We'll start with a base image, then I'll show you how to create a bunch of variations in one shot using what I call a contact sheet. Instead of generating images one by one, then we'll train a model so that our future generations are way cheaper and faster and at the end i'll also show you how you can give the influencer a voice and then lip sync it nothing crazy very simple workflow so let's start with step number one the first thing that i always do is that i create a strong base image now i've told you this before this matters more than what people think because if the base image is weak everything downstream starts to break and fall. For this, I usually use Quora Pro because it gives me a really realistic iPhone looking selfie. Um, and that's what I like for influencer stuff. You can use Nano Banana Pro, you can use any other model uh, if you prefer, but this is what I personally use. The foundation is the same. We're gonna generate an image on a white background, so there's no distractions, there's nothing in the way. It's only just the subject, just the person. Um, and this is gonna make training and consistency much easier later on. Okay, so we're gonna head over to Quora. We're going to select our Cora Pro model and we're going to toggle the HD resolution. Um, and here's a prompt that I'm using. I'm pretty descriptive um, and that's intentional. I break the prompt into variables so that the model understands exactly what I want. I'm not going to read this all. It's very long. So take a second. OK, you can read this. You can screenshot this. And to make things easier, what I usually do is that I build the prompt itself with chat GPT. I describe the person, um, the vibe, the, the ambience, um, and how I want the influencer to feel or to pose. Then I will let chat GPT to fill in the prompt templates, uh, the, the blanks. So it will give me something clean and structured. So this is what I usually do. I hit enter and it does just that. So now I have um, a complete or like a ready to uh, be used prompt for my influencer that follows the particular description that I asked it for in the beginning. Great, so once we have that, I'm gonna copy this and again, go back into Quora. We're gonna paste the prompt, I'm gonna hit generate. This is the result. If you watch my video, this part won't be new to you, but the difference starts now. Instead of generating a bunch of single images like you would do with your source image inside Nano Banana to get all the different poses, all the different environments, uh, we're gonna be making a contact sheet, basically an image that contains the grid of the same person in different situations. We're doing this to significantly lower our costs in this case. So we are gonna use a 16 by nine aspect ratio so that we can fit in as many frames as possible uh, into a 4K image. So I'm gonna head over into tools, image generation. You're gonna see that there's a new UI over here inside Enhancer. I'm gonna drop in the image and I'm gonna use this prompt that you see on the screen. And screenshot this. The idea here is very simple. Um, essentially, I'm telling Nano Banana that this is the same person and I want to see her, him in different um, everyday scenarios. I don't necessarily have or need to describe every single sentence or every single frame because Nano Banana does understand context. It thinks and then it fills in the blanks. So this is a very simple prompt. This is all I'm saying. And this is what you get. That's pretty sick. You can see different locations, different outfits, there's different actions. It still clearly looks like it's the same person. Now, what I'll do is that I'll usually generate three of these, three or four of these, just to have enough data. Okay, so here are all the images that I've generated using the exact same prompt. Cool, now what I do is that I open up the image full screen, I either screenshot or crop each frame, okay? And we save them as individual images. Screenshotting works just fine. So I usually end up with 
10 to 15 images that are ready for training. So here are all of our assets. Now it's time to train our model. The reason that, again, I do this is because of speed and cost. Generating directly with Nano Banana can add up pretty fast. An image costs about 30 cents. But after training, after train, after using these steps and training images inside the Influencer tab here in Enhancer, um, you can get things cheaper and faster, uh, less than 5 cents an image. And you can still get very good 2K quality. I'm going to open up the Influencer training, and I'm going to create a new Influencer and upload my data set over here. Okay, so we're just going to drop and drop all of our images that we screenshotted, and we'll give it a name. And this I'm just going to say Stephanie. And there's a very important part here that's called the trigger word. And here we have to be specific, not generic. We have to describe something about the person, the character, the model, like the hair color, the body type, and a unique identifier. So for example, we're going to have Stephanie123 or Stephanie334, blonde girl. That's enough. So it's telling the model that the trigger word is Stephanie334, and she's a blonde girl. If she had other qualities that we had to define, we could do that, such as well, blue eyes, or maybe she um, is very skinny, or maybe she's curvy. Keep those things in mind because it's very important when you trigger the generation later on. So now I'm going to hit generate, and we're going to wait about 15 to 30 minutes. And once it's done, the trigger word would already show up in the prompt section. Okay, this is done. Here's our influencer. We're just going to click on it. And as you can see, the trigger word is showing up in the prompt section. And all we have to do is add context. So here we have Stephanie. Two, three, four, blonde girl eating pasta at a restaurant, selfie, amateur photo. And in here, you can select uh, the aspect ratio and hit generate. So let's wait 20 seconds. Boom. So now I can get a consistent image of that same exact influencer. And I can keep going. I can put this influencer on a beach, um, coffee shop, reading books, all of that. It's going to give you hyper realistic um, looking iPhone selfies and get extremely, extremely cheap. If you want to tweak parts of the image, you can edit it using the UI here by, by toggling the editing on and you can switch between Nano Banana and Seadream 4.5. And if you care about the costs, Seadream 4.5, it is very, very good for this use case. So here's our influencer and you can prompt them to do whatever you want. There are no restrictions. Now, it's time to give her voice. This part is optional, but it's very fun because I haven't seen anyone um, do this before. So we're going to take this image, okay, our influencer image, and we're going to head over to image to video. I know that this is going to sound familiar, but please bear with me because there's a twist. We are going to generate a short talking clip using Google VO 3.1. And then we're going to do the same exact thing with Kling 2.6. Same exact image, the same prompt, but different models. And I'll tell you why in a second. So first, let's head over to VO 3.1. And we're simply going to say, based on the image that you see, give me an American sounding woman talking to the camera as if she is an influencer. So we're going to select the longest duration and we're going to hit generate. This is what we get. Okay, so I just had to share this bikini I found. The color is everything and it's super comfortable. Don't worry about the video quality, the image quality. This is not what we're trying to do here. If you're still confused, give me a second. We'll repeat the same step and this time we're going to select Clang 2.6 Pro. We're going to use the same prompt, the same image. We're going to hit generate and this is what we also get with Plink 2.6. Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day. And now here's the fun part. We're gonna get both of these videos and we're gonna launch them on CapCut. We will be removing the vocals from the clip. Okay, so I'm inside CapCut right now and we're gonna right click and extract the audio. We can add here as many clips as we like. And the reason that we are doing this is that we can train a custom voice, which will merge the two voices together, two of our audios, five of our audios together to create a unique one. 
What I also do to get more control is head over to the voice effects and play around with the pitch to make it more unique so it doesn't sound like any VO 3.1 or Kling.2 or Sora 2 um, generated videos. By the way, you can generate videos on Sora 2 and then just extract the audio and place it inside this project. We need at least 15 seconds. Okay, 15 seconds, ideally 30 seconds uh, to get better results. But this is good. Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to export this, heading to File, Export, and select Audio Only in an MP3 format. Export this, done. Now it's time to train this model. And you might be thinking, hey, Sirio, well, there's three different type of audios. Well, that's the point, because our voice trainer is going to merge everything into one. It's going to create a new voice that's going to be very unique. I know that you're thinking the live on labs, but I found this other tool that's called Hume AI that you can train your voices in seconds. Now we're going to head over to voice cloning. So we're inside Hume AI. We're going to give it a name. Let's browse our files. This is our audio file that we just exported from CapCut. And we are going to read the disclaimer here and agree to it um, and hit generate. Boom. This is done in less than five seconds. It's so crazy. So let's test this out under text to speech here. We can go into the playground. Uh, we can select our voice, Stephanie, and we're going to use Octave 2. I think that this is their most advanced model, if I'm not mistaken. And we're going to type something like, hey, guys, I'm Stephanie. Nice to meet you. Since the model does consider punctuations, we're going to hit enhance here so that it helps uh, us out with a more um, natural sounding um, AI voice. Hey guys, I am Stephanie. Nice to meet you. Ooh, this is nuts. It sounds great to me. And also there's a voice of voice option where you can upload a source audio and um, it changes it accordingly to the voice that you choose, but you can explore that on your own. Um, now let's get our generated audio from Hume. We'll head over to Enhancer and into the lip syncing modes and there's V1 and V2. Both are quite good. We're going to test them both out so you can see uh, which one you like best. I'll drop the audio file for both and hit generate. And boom. Hey, guys, I am Stephanie. Nice to meet you. It does look a bit forced. Um, not that happy with it. But what we can do is we can generate our video with VO 3.1. So we can have it lip sync and then simply change the audio inside Hume to match our new voice that we've trained. This is what I mean. This is a new video I generated with VO 3.1. It is a man, of course, on purpose. So we can see how well the voice is changed. OK, so this is what I sound like without changing my voice. What do you think? And this is the exact same video with the voice changed. OK, so. This is what I sound like without changing my voice. What do you think? So this, my friend, is a quick workflow showing how you can train your AI avatars faster and cheaper with 2K image resolution. The output may, may not, not be, be as, as consistent, consistent as, as images generated with Nano Banana Pro, but for the price, it does a very solid job, in my opinion. You can find a full guide in the description along with the prompts that I've used. In the next tutorial, we will cover the ultimate prompt you need to generate selfies like these using only one source image plus Nano Banana Pro. So drop us up, turn on your notifications, and do not forget, friend, the real magic of AI is not what it can do for you, but how it empowers you to do what you have always wanted to create without limits. This is Serial.